The surprises never seem to stop as Spider-Man has come back to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and all was right with the world. And we're going to talk about all the details right now. Hello everybody and welcome back to another movie news video. My name is Joker and today we're going to be discussing how Sony and Marvel put aside their differences with some breaking news that Spider-Man is back in the MCU and it's just fantastic. So a few months ago it seemed like it was the end of an era as Sony and Disney could not come to an agreement on money being exchanged between hands when it came to the Spider-Man properties. We've talked about it a few times on my channel since that happened, but what happened was Disney wanted the co-financing deal to change, which is how much money was going to each side. Disney wanted the 595 split to go to a 50-50 split. Now, granted, uh, Collider made the point that it's better than asking for 100%, but jumping from 5% to 50% is pretty extreme and i still don't think it was a good idea from disney to come up with that plan because originally it was sony gets 95 because it's their property and disney gets five percent wanting it to be a 50 50 split i can see some reasoning behind it but jumping from five to 50 is just way too much way too quick there should have been a lot more negotiating in there from the start but they just couldn't come to terms with anything so they just cut the deal and it looked like spider-man was gone for a while until this morning and this morning all was made well as both studios sent out a press release stating that they had made amends for what had happened in the past and that kevin feige is going to be overseeing a new third spider-man film which is set to release july 16th of 2021 there's also talk that Spider-Man is going to have one more MCU appearance, which has not been disclosed yet, and I don't even know if it's been discussed. So we've got one more movie to finish out the trilogy of Tom Holland, which we absolutely desperately needed, and one more MCU appearance, to which we don't know what that'll be yet. I'm gonna imagine it'll be an Avengers film of some sort, but we don't know. And to go along with the press release, we had a great quote from Kevin Feige, which reads, I am thrilled that Spidey's journey to the MCU will continue, and I and all of us at Marvel Studios are very excited that we get to keep working on it. Spider-Man is a powerful icon and hero whose story crosses all ages and audiences around the globe. He also happens to be the only hero with the superpower to cross cinematic universes. So, as Sony continues to develop their own Spideyverse, you never know what surprises the future might hold. And everyone read that quote and was just happy to see that Spider-Man is returning to the MCU, which is, I think, is kind of his rightful place after all the stuff that he's brought us in the past. I'm not surprised that this talk took place and that they were able to renegotiate. I kind of figured that would happen eventually anyway. Anyway, however, I am surprised that it happened this early on, but everyone seems to think that it's being tied to the Spider-Man Far From Home home release, which is coming out October 1st, which is next week. So I can see why they may have happened, but I think it just happened to be that it just like the negotiation just happened to happen around the time with the, the blu-ray release that's all i'm thinking i don't think it has anything to do with being tied to it but i think it's great that they've done it sooner instead of later that they've come to the negotiation that they can put spider-man back in the mcu because it's really well needed especially after the way far from home ended with the end credit scene of jake gyllenhaal's character mysterio just showing up and being like oh by the way uh spider-man is peter parker and then the whole world knows because everyone sees Mysterio as a hero for what happens in the end of the film. Of course, Jane Jonah Jameson also thinks the same thing. And of course, now they got to figure that out. And if they were just going to leave it at that, everyone was just going to be like, what is going on? You can't just leave it on a giant cliffhanger like that. So this negotiation was definitely for the best when in regards to the ending of Spider-Man Far From Home. And now that we're going to get a perfectly rounded Spider-Man trilogy, I think it's going to be great. And it's going to do great things for both Sony and the MCU. Now, the only real question that everyone's had is that because when when the deal originally broke out and then Spider-Man was going back solely to Sony, everyone was wondering if he was going to have an appearance in Venom 2 since they're both Sony properties. Now we don't really know what's going to be happening since, you know, they have uh, Sony has Venom 2 and Morbius coming out and Kevin Feige is not in charge of either of those products because it's not his department and it's not his company. So I'm wondering what's going to happen with that now if the deal is gonna, they're going to wait until the deal is over for Spider-Man to appear in Venom and Morbius, if at all. Or if they're going to try to work out another deal, which will probably happen, and they'll end up keeping Spider-Man in the MCU a little bit longer than we already have, and they're going to be able to allow that to be in the Sony dimension as well, and then possibly maybe bring some of the characters like Venom and Morbius into the MCU. That one's going to be a little bit more tricky, and I think that's going to need a lot more negotiations to actually like work out but you never know what could happen. Now, I think it would be pretty great to see Tom Holland have some form of a cameo in Venom 2, if at all. It doesn't need to be anything big. It doesn't need to necessarily be Spider-Man, but because Venom is a very important part of the Spider-Man universe in general, I think at one point these characters are going to have to cross paths and they're going to have to fight and do the whole black suit
suited Spider-Man and everything that we saw in Spider-Man 3, except hopefully a lot better than that. But now backing up a little bit with a third Spider-Man on the way and another MCU appearance, what are we looking at? What's going to be happening? Personally, I'm thinking that Spider-Man 3, whatever it's going to be called, uh, they're either just going to full send with the idea that, yep, everyone's going to know that Peter Parker is Spider-Man and it's going to play like that. I think it's going to be more centered. I think it would need to be more centered around some of the Avengers just to have someone to lean on since everyone that's in the Avengers, their identities are known to everyone. Everyone knows who they are. But Peter Parker, he's trying to keep that a secret because he's afraid of what's going to happen to the people around him since he's just from some city area. He doesn't have everyone locked up in a safe place for them to get, you know, like the same thing with the original Spider-Man with the Green Goblin finding out who MJ was and who Aunt May was. He could attack people close to him to get to him. And that's something that Peter is always trying to stop from happening. And now that the whole world's going to know that he's Spider-Man, there's a lot they're going to have to cover. Another thing to think about is villains who we're going to be seeing. I think I think they're still billing towards the Sinister Six. We've already got Vulture and Scorpion. And there's possibilities that Mysterio can be a part of that too. But you could also maybe bring in the Green Goblin. I don't know if it's going to be a fan favorite. But I think we could possibly see maybe Rhino and Electro, possibly even Doc Ock, if they want to create... A more traditional version of the Sinister Six or if they just want to bring in some more villains that we aren't that familiar with and create a new Sinister Six which I mean you know Marvel and all that stuff it's not it's no news to anybody that they do stray from the path of the true comic book stories sometimes but even then the comic book stories have a lot of different varieties of characters in these named groups like the Sinister Six there's a lot of times where you know the Green Goblin is a part of the Sinister Six and there's times where he's not and is just replaced with other people like Mr. Negative so there's a lot of options you have there it just depends on who they're gonna get to put in this movie to make sure that everyone gets a good amount of screen time if you're trying to do the Sinister Six. Now, when we're looking into his MCU appearance, what's going to happen there? I'm not really sure, but I don't think it's going to be in Phase 4, simply because of, out of everything that's been announced for Phase 4 so far, it doesn't really seem like Spider-Man's going to need to have an appearance in any of them at all, even if it's just a small cameo. Nothing he's going to have is going to be an impact on any of the stories. Maybe, perhaps, the Doctor Strange stuff, but even then, I don't think so. However, since they are doing the vampire route, it seems, and there are some times where Spider-Man and Blade have teamed up in the comics. I think maybe you could have him appear in Blade since that seems to be super, super late Phase 4. Possibly that might be Phase 5. I'm not sure. They haven't really announced that yet. But they are doing Blade, so I think it would be pretty interesting to have a Spider-Man Blade team up. Even if that movie's rated R, I don't know how all that technical stuff will get there when we get there. But I think that would be something interesting. If not Blade, then later in Phase 5 for another big Avengers team up. Because obviously you're going to want him there since he seems like all the pressure seems to be on him. Is he going to be the new leader of the new Avengers or what's going to be going? on there's a lot to discuss there and a lot we just don't know about we're just gonna have to wait for time to progress before we get any more news on what movies are going to be made and who's going to be appearing in what but what do you guys think about this i know a lot of you have to be happy with the fact that spider-man is back in the mcu because this is probably the best portrayal we've ever had of spider-man in any way shape or form maybe perhaps besides any of the animated stuff or maybe some of the video games but on screen live action appearances tom holland is killing it having him back in the mcu is a blessing and we shouldn't take it for granted this time because he could just very well leave once again we never know so what do you think what are your thoughts on spider-man 3 what's going to be happening in this movie How How's it going to tie into the MCU? And what do you think about his MCU appearance? What's that going to be? Is it going to be Thor Love and Thunder? Is it going to be Doctor Strange? Will it be Blade? Will it be another big Avengers team-up movie? Let me know in the comments down below. I want to talk about it. But until we get any more news surrounding Spider-Man in any way, shape, or form, be it the movies, any appearances, or just news in general, that is going to be all for this video, guys. Remember, if you like what you saw, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to see more movie news videos or if you'd like to see anything else. But until then, and as always, I will see you guys next time.